Mike, let's talk about who's visiting the Falcons, and that is Anthony Richardson. Um, yesterday we talked about Jalen Carter a little bit, and, and we got into that whole discussion. I don't know what team is going to risk it all, okay, and take Anthony Richardson because that's what they're going to be doing. They're going to risk it all because if it works, if it works, they're geniuses. If it doesn't, everybody will be saying, what a reach. Why did they do it three years from now? It was a bust, and they wasted their time. We don't know how this is going to shake out, but – I've been asking you this for weeks, and now the kid is visiting with our Falcons. Yeah, I was talking to Dr. Bobby, by the way. Uh, that's Dr. Kaufman, by the way. That's go the annual checkup. And we'll do. We'll play Guess Mike's Cholesterol later in the week. But yeah, one of the things he was talking to me today in the office was like, "What, what do you make of this Richardson visit?" I go, "Well, he goes, he goes, and he's a Georgia. I know he went to school with Steve Kuhn and Dr. Bobby. He goes, I don't see it. He goes, I, I said he's more athletic, Cam Newton. I said he's Cam Newton with even more speed, and that's why people are so enamored with him. But I said, yeah, you don't have a sample size that would actually give you any degree of consistency. So he goes, I, I just don't understand how an NFL team would, would take that risk in the top 10. And he's right. Um, but people are going to, somebody's going to do it. Yeah, listen, I, I think more than anything, it, it's about what you can become. I say this all the time. It's not what you are. Mm -hmm. It's what you can become. Desmond Ritter was not drafted by the Falcons for what he did at Cincinnati. It's a nice resume. It's what he can become and what I believe I see him becoming in the next three to five years. Mike, you're projecting. Anybody think Patrick Mahomes was going to be this in college? Only guy that I heard really selling it was, and he was interviewing him at the time, was John Gruden when he used to do that quarterback camp. And he was just enamored with all the stuff he was doing today. At, uh, and he was asking, him, man, you're a cut slinger, man. You're not afraid to throw it in there. And that's about the only – that was the first time Patrick Mahomes was on my radar. That was from that old special yeah. episode on ESPN. But, no, that, aside from that one 30 minutes of television, nobody knew that was going to be that. And, and I think – and the point is, like, when Andy Reid and they moved to go get him, and now we hear, you know, Sean Payton wanted to draft him. There were other teams interested because they saw mm. down the road. Not what you're getting. It's what he can become. And he's become the best quarterback in the league, and now he's won two Super Bowls. I don't know if people felt that way about Jalen Hurts. You know the knock on Jalen Hurts, whether it was Alabama, and then when he went to Oklahoma, was uh, he doesn't throw the ball that well. His completion rate, he doesn't hit guys. He's the highest paid quarterback in the NFL right now. So I don't know what Anthony Richardson's going to be. But the fact that we're meeting and trying to get a feel for him, you know, and some people say, well, yeah, you can use this down the road. And I've always said, well, when are you going to use it? Like, if Anthony Richards is, is starting for, I don't know, pick the team. If he's starting for the Minnesota Vikings, and in two years the Vikings are on our schedule, we'll have a scouting report on it, Mike. They'll know what to do. It's not about this conversation. This conversation is, can he sell himself enough, Mike, to maybe make the Falcons interested outside of the tape, outside of the killing the combine stuff, and the Falcons leave the meetings today and they go, we got to think about this. Right. And by the way, I'm looking at, to your point about Jalen Hurts, the year he got pulled. It is interesting. He was at uh, he was at sixty point four percent. That was that was pretty low for even for college standards. But then he went to got up to seventy two his last year in Bama, and then sixty nine percent. But to your point, the knock was did it, it, it was all happening here with the Mercedes Benz in the championship game when they went to to a tongue of Iloa. Right. But the guy handled all that with class. And he didn't make a ruckus, and there was no parent calling Nick Saban saying we're leaving. And when he did leave, he kept his head down. There was no issues. Then I wonder, did teams do their due diligence to Kyler Murray was a major pain in the A? Because what are you seeing now in Arizona? So this is why teams, all, everyone goes through this process. Now, why for the Falcons, we can debate the merits well, of that, but you, you, you kick the tires on everybody. Yes, but let me answer that question for you about Arizona. The reason why they drafted Kyler Murray is Cliff Kingsbury, period. That's it. Kingsbury said, this is the guy I want to run this offense, and they drafted him. I don't know, Mike, if he was worthy of where they drafted him, and we're seeing it now. But if you have a coach and a high pick and a coach is sold on a player and that coach comes in and the organization goes, it's your world, which they did to Cliff, right. and he goes, this is the guy I want. I've wanted him for five years. I recruited him out of high school. I, I didn't get him at Texas Tech. He's the guy that can run this offense, and now you see where they're at. But I'm talking about the teams doing their due diligence in this draft period. We're hearing about all these tough questions get asked in the jam, whatever Jalen Carters have to go through. You know, this stuff. Did, did anyone do their due diligence on Johnny Football with the Browns before they drafted him? You know, knowing what a complete disaster he was off the field, and it turned into a situation on the field. You know, we talked about Baker. Baker Mayfield's on his third football team. Yeah. I mean, you know, is he going to be able to finally get it together? So – I'm just curious, but you know, Anthony Richardson, there were talks about his immaturity at Florida, and if things didn't go his way or he had a bad series, he would sit and pout. That was stuff that was that was coming from Gator fans and people that follow that team. So I, I'm curious, the, the upside, the physical side of it, if, you, if you're enamored with that and you feel you can, you, can, you can obviously take that to the next level, okay, but I still, still wish that too was back in college for another season. Can I hear Adam Schefter? He was talking about he thinks the, the run on quarterbacks is not starting until the number fourth pick. 
uh, which is, is Indianapolis. So Bryce mm. Young's not interviewing anywhere else. We talked about it yesterday, and that means he feels like or his team feels like that he's going to be one or two. Let's just say one. This is what Adam. This is what Adam Schefter said outside of moving outside of number one. But let me ask everybody this: What if the run on quarterbacks gets a little bit delayed? What if it's a little bit later to start than people thought? We've been hearing about quarterbacks going one, two, three, four. That's not going to happen, I don't believe, in this draft. And what would happen if and when we've seen Carolina make the move up right away? Right away for a quarterback at one. But we haven't seen anybody trade up to two when Houston's open to listening. We haven't seen anybody trade up to number three. Because you know what? I think Indianapolis thinks there's a real chance right now that they could sit right where they are at four and get potentially the second quarterback in this draft. There's a chance we might not see a quarterback go at two or even three, and there might not be a team that you trades mean, up because the value in that what? isn't what we thought it would be. So Indianapolis oh. may be sitting there with its pick in the litter, Anthony so. Richardson or Will Levis or C.J. Stroud. That could happen. That's a possibility right now. I agree. And if that does happen, what does it do for us? If these quarterbacks slide, and Mike and I have been saying this, and these guys are on the board, and, oh, we're going to pick the best player available, Falcon fans, one of these guys is there at eight. Are we just completely dismissing it? Well, I mean, you've spent a, a large amount of energy and effort bending over backwards to tell everybody and their uncle that you're committed to Desmond Ritter. So, I mean, and that was, I think, and that was simply to deflect to Lamar Jackson. That doesn't, that doesn't carry over to any other quarterback in this draft. <laughs> see, I think – I think – that Bryce Young is the guy. And I think that the, I think you could pick apart everybody else's game after him, which you can. And I think that's why, you know, that for whatever, you know, the Texans you said the other day, probably most likely to be moving out now because they don't see their guy. But C.J. Stroud, I mean, that's the thing. Who is the guy for the Colts, to, to Adam Schefter's point? Is it going to be Anthony Richardson? Richardson or is it going to be, you know, you know, Will Levis? I'm, I'm glad he's a gym rat, you know. Well, what? You know, I mean, I still don't understand the hype. You're going to get that turtle guy. excited talking about Will Levis. <laughs> By the way. I'm going to get you a Will Levis poster. So I'm going to get you a fathead once he gets signed this year. <laughs> what, is he going to have his shirt off? I'm, I'm saying, who's going to want it with his shirt on, right? <laughs> but no, but, so, but here's the question. If, that is, if Adam Schefter is correct, then we don't get Tyree Wilson. We certainly, you could argue, won't get Jalen Carter if other teams are going to go for other needs. So then, then you get into that question you're asking about. If it's the best athlete, and Anthony Richardson is by far the best, one of the best athletes in this draft. And we've already spent two of our first-round picks on the best athlete available. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's just a question, and, and I'll be honest with you. I hope we're not in this predicament. I, I do. I hope we're not mm. sitting there. I want it to play out, Mike, where it's blatantly obvious <laughs> who we need to go get at eight, and everybody's like, okay, this is cool. We go get a corner. We go get our edge, and it's easy. But if you've got all these guys sitting there, and then you're like, okay, again, you can't just tell me that you haven't done the research, which is why Anthony Richardson is meeting with our Falcons today. You can't tell me that you're not doing the research and saying, hey, you know, we talked to him, and we really liked him. And I, I don't know if you fall in love with him enough to mm. take him at eight, but I do think that what Adam Schefter just laid out could realistically happen draft night. And then just another idea, if you want to trade seat, the more that we're getting closer, Carl, if you follow the radio show, we kind of do this every year. We go through, you know, a couple of years ago, it was Justin Fields. And then we talked about, well, maybe it would be this guy or that guy. As we get closer and closer to the minute, then later on, it was probably going to be Pitts. The, the closer we get to draft day, I got to be honest with you. We have not improved left guard. We don't even know who's playing left guard. And the guys that are in camp to play left guard are not that impressive, if we're honest. I would, I think they're fine going with Skaronsky or plugging in for the time being. And then maybe he could move out later on. Whether you, whether you want to go with Roderick Jones, you want to go with Paris Johnson. I just think we got to fix the line. I am I, not going to mock. No, but for all the money we've spent, Carl, we still got a big hole at the left side of the line right now. Well, I mean, just, and we're trying to protect Ritter and establish him as the man.